it's a mammoth job to put the whole thing together. How do you start uh, breaking the whole thing down? Where, where do you begin? Well, we have to begin at least a year ahead in order to book the hall and everything else. Finding a place to rehearse is very difficult. Uh, there's a limited number of places in Axbridge. We'd like to do it in the town hall, of course, which is where we're going to produce it, um, but it's often not available. We work in the church rooms and other places like that. Uh, fewer places available than there used to be, so actually getting the place is one of the problems. Yes, that's an extra bit that I do. Yes, <laughs> um, Not part of the production manager's role, but I do do the lighting, yes. But uh, again, this is something that has to be done at the last minute. Um, we've, we've put some lighting bars in the hall as a permanent thing, but of course the lights all hired in, mostly hired in, uh, on the week. They have to be put up the first weekend. Um, and uh, then that's the first time we get to rehearse with them course in those few days before the opening night and so the stage itself of course it, it's set all has to be set up at the beginning of that week and it's the first time we get to actually rehearse with it. Do you manage to get any sleep that week? Not a lot but some yes. <laughs> Across the square from the town hall are the church rooms where many of the rehearsals took place under the artistic direction of John Bailey. Why me above all? I'll pay all eyes. Members of okay. Axbridge Community Theatre and its junior branch, Young Act, Just made up the cast of our familiar play set okay. in Middle America following World okay. War II. John Bailey there, placed the drama the in its context. Um, it describes an action over the course of one day. And for all that the thing is set in 1947 and is seemingly about uh, the results or the aftermath of the Second World War, uh, it's actually about universal themes uh, and themes uh, that are still very relevant uh, today uh, in the sense of moral responsibility, in the sense of family values, uh, in the sense of the fact that as a result of war uh, it seems that people uh, can take an opportunity to be immoral because of that war and what this does is to tackle that big theme head on uh, and deal with it. Uh, and I need to see your expressions as you, uh, either before, immediately before uh, and during. Because uh, it's this realisation that's come from Kate. Okay? Uh, I'm surprised you remembered his birthday, Frank. That's nice. I'm surprised you remember his birthday, Frank. That's nice. Pete, we're talking about the accents in the film. Mm. Um, how have you sort of gone about trying to train your, your voice? Um, I think something I've been doing since, a, is a, since I was a kid was uh, doing accents of various types. Um, uh, American accent is actually quite a difficult one to do and it's quite difficult to uh, keep up as well. It's all about the pronunciation of certain words as well because as soon as you start saying something um, that um, doesn't, isn't pronounced the same way in uh, British English as it is in American English, it's very apparent very quickly uh, that you, you've fallen uh, and then it's often quite difficult to get it back but actually I've, I think I found uh, talking to myself in the shower and uh, at various times and uh, practicing in the car and things like that. Um, people probably think I'm a bit mad but um, it also helps with having the other cast trying to do the same thing because you, you, you work from each other and take cues from each other in, in that regard as well and it sort of helps it all to stay together. And again, how have you got on with the American accent? Um, I guess I'm quite lucky because I'm not on a hell of a lot. And also because I am a quite a loud character, I find that easier to practice a, an American accent with a louder voice. So I can come so, on. Sarah, tell me about the poster, Why the Tree is Broken. What's it all about? Well, um, the tree represents Larry. The family planted the tree for him um, when he was pronounced missing, presumed dead. And on the night before the play starts, the tree is blown down in a storm. And Kate Keller, his mother, believes that it's because he's not dead and he's coming back. Um, and it sort of represents the kind of broken hopes and the damage done to everybody in the play by the Second World War. Um, and maybe it's got something to do as well with fathers and sons. I know there's a proverb 
I think it might be French. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, and it's about sons being like fathers. And the style of it, I bought a lovely postcard in Bristol. It was a Bristol postcard, and um, I borrowed the style to make our poster. The idea is that Anna's there is so big. Because you, you, you are quite a bitch in the, in the play, aren't you? Oh! Well, well, yes, I am, really. And so does the makeup really try and reflect that sharp, sharpness of character? I look very, very hard, I think, with this makeup. I think so. Um, this is what we're trying to achieve. Yeah, yeah. I look very old and very hard. Um, but it, it helps, it all helps create the illusion. Yeah. And you play quite a kind of um, a, an amusing character in the last play, so is this quite a challenge for you, or does being nasty come um, easy? You get, you get a couple of laughs. Well, Maria don't wasn't you? very nice and tough right either. She was quite a. Take <laughs> Quite a scheming woman. And I think Sue Bayliss is, is a little bit similar as well. You know, she has her game plan and she's going to stick to it, and nothing will, will stand in her way. So. Right. Well, I'm making an attempt. I'm no hairdresser. I think I've been Sweeney Todd this time because I've tortured them. I need to try and recreate Forty's hairstyle. In the case of Anna, she's supposed to look very natural. She's a mother, harassed mother really, though very happy, of three babies. And so we've kept her very natural and um, her hair is quite wild when you see it under. I will be undoing it soon, leaving it a little while, and then pinning back the sides, and then it just <laughs> comes down in curls. And how have you found the experience of uh, performing on stage? Um, I've been in school plays and other plays and stuff. So you're a bit of an old hand, really? Can I just put in a good word for him? Because he's a member of my young act and he was chosen. There were four of them shortlisted for this part because they all did excellent American accents. And then two of them were selected and they've done um, two nights each. So this is Tebo in real life and he's a very good little act. Or Tebo. So tell me about your character. OK, I play uh, Dr Jim Bayliss, who um, opens the play alongside Joe Keller. He's one of the neighbours, and uh, at the beginning of the play, he appears like um, a bit of comic light relief. He's married to Sue, who gives him a very hard time, and they're quite a comedic couple. But as the um, play goes on, you begin to see the significance of those characters, and in particular in Act 3, it turns out that Jim has known all along about... Joe Keller's crime and he intimates to Kate as much and uh, is obviously implicated in not having done anything about it. So he becomes a more interesting character as the play progresses and I think the audience like it because uh, having seen him in amusing situations throughout he suddenly takes on quite sort of serious and significant central role towards the end. Uh, I've enjoyed playing it. So does it get really busy here? Yes, it does. Yes, we, we've just had a small rush, actually. Yeah. Especially in the interval, we get a lot yes, of money. Yes, we do. And what's the, what's the most popular drink? Um, white wine, white wine, actually, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're pouring right now. Yeah. Very nice to see you all last night. Um, feels kind of odd. As we finish this off, um, it's been so good, and last night was so good. Um, we just need to retain that now. Um, the second half was about as cultured as I've ever seen in that production.
is your tobacco? I think I left it on the table. Say so? Yeah, right here. <laughs> then it can't rain. <laughs> uh, Hello, Frank, what's doing? Nothing. <sighs> Walking off my breakfast. That beautiful? No, it's loud. Yeah, nice. Every Sunday ought to be like this. Oh, what the fuck? Kate asked you to make the horoscope. Yeah, what she wants to find out is whether November 25th was a favourable day for Larry. What is that? Favourable day? A favourable day for a person is a fortunate day, according to his stars. In other words, it would be practically impossible for him to have died on his favourable day. Well, was that his favourable day, November 25th? That's what I'm working on, to find out. It takes time. The point is that if November 25th was his favourable day, then it's completely possible that he's still alive. Somewhere. He's okay. He's just completely out of his mind, that's all. The trouble with you is you don't believe in anything. And your trouble is you believe anything. Now, when are you going to go and see Mr. Hubbard? My dear, Mr. Hubbard is not sick. And I have better things to do than sit there and hold oh, his hand. It seems to me, for ten dollars, you could hold his hand. Frank! The toaster! Oh, hiya! Oh. The toaster's up again. Well, plug it in. I just fixed it. Please don't fix it back like it was before. I don't know why you can't learn to turn on a simple thing like a toaster. <laughs> Top of medicine. Ah. He really is very handy. The wind at your tree. Yeah, last night. What a pity. Any news yet? Yeah, she'll be done soon. When you meet her, so she's a knocker. Should have been a man. <laughs> People are always introducing me to beautiful women. <laughs> you know why I asked Andy, don't you? Why? You know. I got an idea, but what's the story? I'm going to ask you to marry me. Well, that's only your business, Chris. You know it's not only my business. What do you want me to do? You're old enough to know your own mind. Uh, then it's all right, then I'll go ahead with it. Oh, you want to be sure Mother hasn't gone. Then it isn't just my business. I'm just saying. Go home, Bert! I want you to stop that. The whole child business. I mean, if she was sent here to find out something. Well, why? What is there to find out? I mean, if they want to open up the case again. But a nuisance failure, that hurts. How can you get himself off the bed? I thought he had pneumonia. Why did you say he I know how you feel, kid. I'll never forgive myself. If I, if I could have gone in that day, I'd never allowed Dad to touch those heads. She said you've never been sick. I said you were sick, George. And didn't you hear her say he'd never been sick? Do you remember every time you were sick? I remember pneumonia. Especially if I got it the same day that my partner patched up some cylinder heads. Answer him. <laughs> I packed your bag, darling. What? I packed your bag. All you gotta do is close it. I'm not closing anything. Asked me here. And I'm staying till he tells me to go. Till Chris tells me. That's all. Get out of here, George. Well, if that's how he feels. That's all! Nothing more till Christ comes about the case 
on Larry, as long as I'm here. Now get out of here, George. You tell me. I want to hear you tell me. Go, George. Then I don't belong here. She's Larry's girl. And I'm his brother and he's dead and I'm marrying his girl. Never, never in this world. You lost your mind? You've got nothing to say. I got plenty to say. Three and a half years, you've been talking like a maniac. No, you've got nothing to say. Now I say he's coming back and everybody's got to wait. Mother, mother! Wait, wait! How long? Hmm? How long? Till he goes. Forever and ever till he goes. Mother, I'm going ahead with it. Chris, I've never said no to you in my life. Now I'm telling you no. You'll never let him go until I do it. I never let him go and you never let him go. I've let him go. I let him go along. Then let your father go. Oh, she's out of her mind. Absolutely. Your brother is alive, darling. Because if he's dead, your father killed him. Do you understand me now? Listen. My dear Anne, it is impossible to put down the things I feel, but I've got to tell you something. Yesterday, I threw in a lot of papers from the States. I read about Dad and your father being convicted. I can't express myself. I can't tell you how I feel. I can't bear to live anymore. Last night, I circled the place for 20 minutes before I could bring myself in. How could he have done that? Every day, three or four, four men never come back, and he sits there doing business. I don't know how to tell you what I feel. I can't face anybody. I, I'm going out on a mission in a few minutes. They'll probably report me missing. If they do, I want you to know that you mustn't wait for me. I tell you, Anne, if I had him there now, I, I could kill him. You see, why are you going? I can't sleep here. It'd be better if I go. You're so foolish. Larry was your son, wasn't he? He would never tell you to do this. And what is this if it isn't telling me? Sure, he was my son. But I think to him, they were all my sons. And I guess they were. I guess they were. Be right down. What more can we be? You can be better. Once for all, you can know that there's a universe of people outside, and you're responsible to it. But unless you know that, you threw away your son because that's why he died.
many are from it before, and it really was, yeah, it really stretched the imagination. Um, I wasn't quite expecting the end that we had, but no, it was fantastic, really. There seems to be some interesting commentary on the war and, and the proceeds of war, making money from war, but. Um, what is more intriguing about this place is the plot that he's uh, starting to unravel and uh, uh, the denial of loss and things like that. So, yeah, it seems very powerful to him. Well, I thought it was brilliant, actually. Yeah, they did very, very well. Uh, so it's a very wordy uh, piece and they were spot on, I thought. Yeah, emotions. Had you seen the play before? No, no, it was perfectly uh, new to me. I'd read it, but not uh, seen anything like it. And, uh, I thought they handled it very, really very well. Very much so, yeah, really good actually. Um, I love Arthur Miller and uh, I've not seen this play before and uh, yeah, really, really good. What are your sort of general impressions of the whole show? Um, that was put a lot of work into it. Um, I like the set, I think the set's very good. Um, and there's clearly some strong characters there. I'm interested to see how they, how they develop in the next two acts. I thought the government was extremely well. In fact, Julian McClay said to me it's the best yet, and I agree with it.